Welcome back to another episode of Be Tailored where hopefully we're going to be sorting out the interior on the TL240. So one of my pet peeves with this car so far has been the fact that there is no blower motor. We are in Kansas where the temperatures range from extremely hot to extremely cold and freezing so it's essential to have some kind of climate control when you're dailying any car uh, for that matter. So the problem with this car's climate control is the fact that the blower motor wasn't working. It looked like everything was installed in there when I initially put it together, so I was kind of banking on the fact that it would work. But, uh, turned the climate controls on and nothing came through, so I figured it was just a bad blower motor, so I was going to take this one out and put the one from Carol, my original S13, into the Teal 240. But I ran into a problem with that. For you guys that are familiar with Carol, I got into a big collision with her, and it managed to push in the firewall actually, the force was so great. And when that happened, it just happened to crush the entire blower motor. So I got the AC unit and the blower motor taken out. As you can see here though, it's just crushed and unfortunately I can't use it. it still works though. But then I took a closer look into the SEAL 240 as far as wiring or something. There was one plug into the climate controls that I did not plug in. The first time around I did manage to get this plug in because it's hard to miss. But, what I didn't do is plug in this yellow clip here. And lo and behold, we have a blower motor now. Just turn it on to accessory. Uh, the blower motor is not mounted up to the car right now, so don't mind any rattles here from there. It's just the blower motor spinning up against the bar. Yeah, it just needs mounting up. Thank goodness for the little things. It's a stupid thing to miss, but I'm glad I didn't go out and try to buy another blower motor and try to replace all the stuff that I didn't need to. It was just a simple plug that I missed. Another thing that I think I'm gonna try to tackle is swapping out the dash bars in these cars though. This one, um, it's a little haggard, I think. It's seen a lot more exposure to the elements. As opposed to the dash bar on Carol, there's also a few uh, threads in here that are stripped on the steering column, so definitely want to make sure this thing is safe to drive So I'm gonna go ahead and swap these out to remove the dash bar It's as simple as a few 10 mil bolts on the far sides and the center of the bar You have the option of using a screwdriver, but only use it as a last resort There will be many plastic clips that fasten the wiring harness to the bar So carefully undo these clips if you want to salvage and reuse them. I used a needle nose plier to remove mine Keep track of how each loom is routed and where each plug should be when you put it all back together. This will ensure that nothing is kinked and that you have the proper length of wire to reach your connectors. So I have a bit of a coolant leak coming from the engine bay and I couldn't figure out where it was until we finally lifted this thing up, of course. And I could see a little bit of coolant leaking from where the back coolant hoses go into the heater core on the interior of the firewall so I'm gonna go ahead and change that out that's not totally necessary for maybe what you're doing um, so I'm gonna have to dis disconnect the AC lines which luckily are already discharged and the coolant lines in the engine bay so a little extra step that I'm taking that you may not necessarily have to do it turns out the heater core is fine. The problem is that the size of the ports on the heater core are different than the ports coming from the engine, so I'll need an adapter to remedy this later. Either way, I need to remove the lines to remove the interior units. Keep in mind that my AC system is already depleted. If you plan on removing your interior AC units, you'll want to go to a professional shop to drain all of the Freon in your system. If you vent the Freon into the air, you'll be killing Mother Earth, and she might retaliate with some killer plants. We're gonna be tearing apart this blower motor because recently took it out of the car. It's a good blower motor, but it's uh, been infested with rodents. So I'm working on taking it apart and cleaning it out before I put it back in there and have all that lovely aroma pushing onto my face. So we're gonna get this nasty thing cleaned up, taken apart, um, and I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. So let's go. So there's a bunch of these little clips holding on the bottom side of it, so I've just been working on taking those apart so I can get a better better access to the innards of this thing. Look at that. 
that. This is nasty. Hmm. So this is pretty gross. So what I'm gonna do is swap this out with another one that I have um, that isn't covered in urine and fecal matter. So here's our old but still much cleaner blower motor itself. We're gonna connect it to this piece, make sure the vent's facing to the left, and having the plug face at, oh, maybe a three o'clock angle. Otherwise, when you go to plug it in, nothing is gonna line up right. So far, this job's been pretty simple. Um, it's been a mix of basically all screws and maybe a couple of bolts, but you can still use a screwdriver even then. Um, really a lot, much more simple than I thought it'd be. Just be careful to make sure you know which screws go where. Now you don't over tighten because it is 25 year old plastic very brittle and finding another one of these might be a little more challenging than you think so be careful got the two halves apart everything is pretty now the next thing I'm doing is just working on switching over the entire motor itself that operates the panel because I'm already here. I trust mine, my old one, more than I trust this dirty old rat infested one. Your hardcore drift friend Timmy might question why you're going through all this work when you can just scrap the entire system for weight savings. According to him, quote unquote race cars don't need AC or heat. Well, you can laugh at him at the next track day or sushi meet when he steps out of his car drenched in sweat, while you and your babe of a co-pilot step out of your luxurious, full interior, AC-equipped car. You could have had it all, Timmy. You could have had it all. There we go. Perfectly, well, it's about as good as it's gonna get. All right, there you go. The blower motor assembly is all taken apart, put back together, so now I'll have nice, hot or cold air, depending on what I want. Blower motor was filthy, but not to worry anymore because we got it nice and cleaned up. Thanks again to you, Carol. Oh, danger. So here's a little update. It looks like the best way to go about installing carpet, which I have for this car, is to do it without the heater core, blower motor, and AC unit in here. Um, so what I've done, this is mostly cleared out. I still have to clean it out before I put the rest of the carpet in there. But what I've done is my new carpet doesn't have any holes or anything, so I've taken the carpet out of Carol, bless you, and I'm gonna use it as a template to cut out all of these little holes that we need to make our job much easier. All right, so here we go. We've got our brand new black carpet face down on the ground, and we're gonna lay the old carpet on top of it so that we can line up our holes and then cut them out. At least I thought that is what I would do. For some odd reason, I couldn't get the OEM carpet to sit the way I wanted it to, so I found it easier to flip the carpets and make my cuts from there. There is often much more material than you need, but be careful not to cut off too much. It may be painful and take longer, but it's easier to cut off little bits at a time and test fit where you need to trim. It's currently the next day and we've gotten a little progress done from yesterday. Last night I stayed up a little bit to cut some holes in the carpet so that we have some room for our, to bolt our seats in. Uh, it's kind of a pain because I got the super thick carpet. Uh, I forget where I got it, but there's extra backing that you have to cut through, which is really nice. Um, I should really help deaden things up. I'm just getting this laid out and cut up and then I'll take everything out clean it up once more and we'll put everything back in. The wiring limb is a mess, but we'll get that taken care of once we put the dash bar back in. But I've gotten most of the driver's side done. Now I just have the passenger side to do. These carpets don't come with any pre-cut holes that we need. Literally none. So they need to be cut out. If you can't mark your targets out, you'll need to feel around underneath the carpet for your marks. Just be careful not to cut yourself like I did.
So it's starting to get dark, but I've gone ahead and taken the carpet out so that we can clean the underside on the chassis, make sure there's no dirt or moisture just sitting there collecting over the years while this beautiful black carpet that is now trimmed um, rests where it's gonna be for the next. I'm not, I'm not sure if that sense made any sense. We're gonna clean this thing before we put that carpet in. We've got some simple green, some paper towels, and should be all we need. Before installing this brand new carpet, we want to make sure that every little nook and cranny is cleaned out, because I won't have another chance to clean this deep once it's in. You don't have to go all out with the full detail, but just make sure that there isn't any debris where moisture can come through and collect to cause rust. Finally, the moment of truth, we've got this car cleaned up, now it's time to put this carpet in once and for all. Once this thing goes in here, it's gonna stay in there for good. Sorry. I found that the best way to put this carpet in here is by putting the driver's side in first. That way, you can slide the carpet underneath the pedals. This can be a pain in the butt to bend under. You don't do it that way. At least that was the easiest way to take it out. We'll see if it's the same way. I'm putting this back in. So far, it's uh. Not working out too bad. Ugh. Be careful you don't break any wires or anything like that. Ah, oh, look at that. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Oh, so great. Can't wait. Start driving around in my map car. Shout out to you Mighty Car Mods. Can't wait to start driving around in my street car and be able to hear people when I'm talking to them, whether it be on the cell phone or in uh, the passenger seat. This is just gonna be great. Ugh, can't wait. I'd say the most difficult part about putting the carpet in is the initial cuts. Um, the biggest things you want to take care of there are the cuts for the handbrake, the shifter, and the uh, dash bar mount. Oh man, there we go. I'll get back to you when this is done. about that look at that nice plush black carpet in there Ooh, it's gonna look good it's uh it's pretty dirty right now but that's because I've been moving around out here in the driveway trying to get this cut up but once we get it all vacuumed and sorted out all the interior put back together I think this is gonna look be great I will say that a lot of people usually tend to go after 89 or 90 240SX carpet because it seems to have a much oh it's got a certain texture to it that people really like and it's easier to install obviously you don't have to cut up all these holes but I've always wanted a black carpet in these cars I just think it goes so well with the rest of the black dash and the black door cards black's always in and I'm super excited to have this carpet in here finally but now that we have the carpet in here Next step of the process is putting the heater core, AC unit, and the blower motor back in so we can put the dash bar in and get the rest of the dash together and start driving this car once again. 
To reinstall the climate system, we need to first install the heater core in the center, followed by the blower motor on the far passenger side, and then the AC unit between them. It will take some wiggling, but with the dash bar removed, you should have open access to the entire area. Now would be a good time to reinstallate any degraded foam around the vents with new foam. This may also help dampen any rattles that may potentially drive you to burn the car down. Reinstalling the dash bar is the same process as taking it out. It's going to be a tight fit, as this may also be a strengthening unit for the structure of the car, so gentle persuasion and massaging of the bar with a hammer may be needed. After it's where you want it to be, lay your wiring harness where you need it and clip it back into the bar. Welcome to another day of our interior overhaul on the TL240. I realize I've been doing a pretty uh, poor job of documenting the entire process of putting the carpet in, reinstalling all of our climate control units and stuff like that. Um, but I've got it done. I think that was the main thing that I wanted to accomplish and it can be difficult trying to accomplish things versus filming. I'm sure you guys understand, but I'll go ahead and give you guys a rundown of what's gone on in here. So the first order of business was installing the carpet. The biggest hurdle was getting my big holes in the center part of the carpet cut out so that I could lay it in the car and not have stuff like the handbrake or the gear shifter in the way. After I laid it out, I kind of felt around for stuff like the seatbelt bolts, um, stuff like that, wiring. I kind of had to feel around and find where the hole is and take a guess and stab it out using a um, straight blade, you know, razor edge. So after we got all of the holes situated in the car that needed to be cut out, I went ahead and took the carpet out, gave it one more clean uh, because I don't want to take this carpet out again. And then we put the carpet back in and after that we went ahead and installed all three of our uh, climate control units. So the first thing I put in was the heater core itself along with the controls that didn't really come apart. Next thing I put in were the blower motor, or the second thing I put in was the blower motor. and bolted in my two bottom nuts and one up top over here. Uh, same thing with the heater core. There's one bolt in the back over there and another one up top and one below on the corner back there. Last thing I installed was the AC unit um, because it kind of lifts up into the heater core and the blower motor. Just a simple two bolts down below and uh, I don't think there was one up top, but there's one that connects to it over here that hooks it up to the blower motor. And then after that, we've got the dash bar installed. Took a little persuasion, but luckily all the bolts were there. I did manage to, I did manage to break a bolt over here, uh, but it's okay because it's still fastened in by this one over here. And we've got the same two on the other side. Two top bolts over here and our two nuts over here with our ground. One of the biggest things that I did that helped me, obviously that you'll have to do when disassembling all this is dropping the steering column. It's a total of two bolts up toward the driver and then two nuts um, right above the pedals on the inside. Honestly, these welded in nuts were the biggest reason that I wanted to swap the dash bars out. Um, until 240, this nut was stripped out uh, so I only had one bolt holding this steering column up. Now we have a good dash bar on here with threads in both of those welded on nuts so the steering column is nice and in place. Now after we got the dash bar in place, we went ahead and wired in or ran all of our wiring where it needed to be and clipped it in. Most of the time those clips on your old wiring harness is going to be really brittle and crack like any other plastic on an old Nissan or any old car for that matter. So uh, be careful if you want to take care. Um, it's at some point it's going to be kind of unavoidable what you break though. You can more than likely find them online but I'm not going to go through all that because it's kind of unnecessary for what I want to do so 
uh, this should work pretty well. So my next step in this car is going to be just bolting in the driver's side seats and our gauge cluster so that we can get this thing back to the garage and get most of the interior back and put together. But we have a little bit of a come up with the gauge cluster and a little bit of a drawback. I had bought another cluster to kind of part out and put into my cluster with my 60,000 mile uh, mileage on here. But I was a fool and disassembled the Speedo by taking out the little needle that tells you your reading. These gauges don't like it when you take out the needle out of the cluster or the gauge itself because it has a little magnetic piece in the winding. Um, in short term it's very, very finicky and if you try to take it apart and put it back in more than likely it's not going to want to sit correctly and it's uh, the magnet's not going to want to keep it. The magnet's going to be out of place and your needle is going to stick like mine does all the time now so bought another cluster or searching for another cluster to replace the speedo however we have a new tack not a new tack but it's an old tack an old tack out of a Japanese 180 with an SR20 maybe a Sylvia what's so special about this one is the fact that instead of the 7000 uh, RPM red line that the USDM clusters have, we now have the Japanese 7.5 grand RPM red line. With an, it reads to 9,000, which I think is pretty cool. We're not going to be anywhere near that most of the time. Uh, I just think it's a really cool piece to have, and I'm super stoked on it, and I can't wait to be seeing that all day when I drive this thing. I'm just, I've always wanted that little piece in there, and I think it's a little touch that I'm really going to enjoy. But yeah, that's enough talking for now. Let's get back to it. Well, the seat's finally back in. We got our gauge cluster jerry-rigged up to the dash of the car, and we've got our steering wheel, so I think it's time to head back to the garage. Now it's time to see if this uh, tachometer will work. Beautiful. Not so beautiful. Well, would you look at what I did? Silly me forgot to close out the video, so here we are in my apartment. Thank you guys so much for sticking it through that video. I know it was kind of long. I hope it didn't bore you too much, but the end result is definitely worth it. I'm so pumped on how this interior has come out. That black carpet really brings the whole interior of the car together, and it looks great. So if you guys got anything out of the video at all, please make sure to like that video and consider subscribing. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.